Now picture this, and keep in mind, this is hypothetical. My name is Orenthal James Simpson, OJ to most people. I'd been somebody at once. I had my glory days on the playing field, a number of high-paying corporate gigs, many years as a football analyst, and even something of a career as a Hollywood actor. She was a stunner. Blonde, slim, and bright-eyed. Who are you, I asked. Nicole. One night in 1984, we were in the middle of another argument, and I went outside to get away from her. There was a tether ball hanging from one of the trees and a baseball bat lying nearby. Nicole came out of the house and watched me for a few moments. I still had the bat in my hand, and I remember flipping it into the air and accidentally hitting one of the rims. You going to pay for that? She snapped. Yeah, I snapped back, and then took the bat and whacked the hood. I guess I'll pay for that, too, since it's my car, and since I pay for everything around here. Nicole looked at me again. I smiled, and she smiled. A few weeks later, we set a date for the marriage. Suddenly, I'm remembering what Nicole's mother told me on the very day that we first met. Don't let Nicole gain weight. She had that temper on her, as I said. And if something set her off, she tended to come at me fists and feet flying. Mostly, I'd just try and get out of her way, but sometimes I had to hold her down till she got herself under control. Once, I locked her in our wine closet during an argument. I can't count the number of times she turned to me in the middle of a fight, pausing to catch her breath and saying, OJ, what the hell were we arguing about anyway? Did things get volatile from time to time? Yes. I only ever got truly physical with her once, and that was in 1989. I hit her once, not even hit her, technically, and ever since that day, I've been known as a wife beater. Did I physically drag Nicole out of the bedroom and push her out into the hallway? Yes. My wife didn't want me anymore. It's over. I know, she said. We went into her bedroom and made love. We both knew it was going to be the last time. It was actually very nice. I'm leaving, she said. I looked at her as if to say, so fucking what? On the drive home, I decided to stop by her house, the one on Gretna Green, to see if she was still awake. And as I drew close, I noticed lights in the window and went to have a closer look. Nicole was inside on the couch with a friend of hers, Keith Lumsowich. It was pretty hot and heavy. I took a deep breath and turned to go, but paused to knock on the front door. Hard just to let them know that they'd been seen. I hadn't been laid in months. I found myself thinking about a Raiders cheerleader I'd known some years back. I dug up her number and called. Hey, it's me, OJ. I wanted to see how you were doing and to tell you that I'm a free man. She came over to the house a few days later and we had dinner and all I could think was, OJ is coming out tonight. I kicked off my shoes and began to strip. I took off my pants and shirt. I left my socks on, though. And that's all I'm going to say about that. They want me to say I've been traumatized by the repeated batterings, Nicole said. Repeated batterings, I said. What the hell is that supposed to mean? I know, Nicole said. I can't believe it either. They're trying to convince me that I'm a victim of abuse. I'd been bothered by that one incident when I saw her through the window of her house, going at it on the couch with Keith Lumsowich. You know, Nicole, this right here is why I've been avoiding you. You got a problem with this or a problem with that, and you put everything on me. Help me, O.J. Fix this for me, O.J. Nicole was always looking to make enemies, and she had finally turned me, the person she was closest to, into enemy number one. You don't get mood swings like that from eating Wheaties. I was sick and tired of her shit. The girl was an accident waiting to happen. For a moment, I thought back to the night I'd surprised her at the Gretna Greenhouse, going at it on the couch with her friend Keith Lumsowich. I remember thinking, that woman is going to be the death of me. I reached into the back seat for my blue wool cap and my gloves. I reached under the seat for my knife. It was a very nice knife, a limited edition, and the gate opened if you gave it a little push. I must have told her a million times, please get the goddamn gate fixed. It was obvious that Nicole was expecting company. I wondered who the fuck it was this time. Just as I was beginning to get seriously steamed, the back gate squeaked open. A guy came walking through like he owned the fucking place. Who the fuck are you? I said. I, uh, I just came by to return a pair of glasses. She's got candles burning inside. Probably a nice bottle of red wine breathing on the counter. You think I'm fucking stupid or something? Suddenly the front door opened. Nicole came outside. She was wearing a slinky little cocktail dress. Black. With probably not much on underneath. OJ, Nicole hollered. Leave him the fuck alone. Fuck you, I said. Nicole came at me swinging. Fuck you. No, fuck you. I gave you everything you could ask for, and you fucked it all up. Then something went horribly wrong. Then I remembered that Goldman guy coming through the back gate, and I remembered how our shouts had brought Nicole to the door. I looked down and saw her on the ground in front of me. Goldman was only a few feet away, slumped against the bars of the fence. Both he and Nicole were lying in giant pools of blood. 
noticed the knife in my hand. The knife was covered in blood, as were my hand and wrist and half of my right forearm. Jesus Christ, O.J., what have you done? This was about me. I was depressed. Then I was angry. Then I was depressed again. For the first time in my life, I thought about killing myself. I unzipped it and pulled out the magnum. I was in tremendous pain, and I saw nothing but more pain ahead of me, and I decided to end it. One shot to the fucking head and it's over. And just then I heard Dan Rather's voice on the radio. And I just goddamn snapped. What the fuck, motherfucker? I almost put a bullet through the radio. I wasn't thinking of killing myself anymore. I'm going to run over to McDonald's. So we pulled up to the drive through window and I ordered food for everyone. I ate my burger on the ride back. I finished the burger and felt lousy. It had gone down wrong. A moment later, I felt the tears coming. We should have tried harder. I should have tried harder. The lesson here was simple. It doesn't always pay to do the right thing. Especially if you're doing it for people who don't give a fuck about you. I thought about that as I stripped and got into bed. Don't feel sorry for me. Please think of the real OJ and not this lost person. Keith Lumsowich. Peace and love. OJ. Is that twisted?